This is a new finding and is going to alarm you. February 21st, 2019, it's on Science Alert by Michael Starr. Having to do with astronomy, our solar system, and this is just unbelievable. Uh, I'm having trouble to believe it because we've been told totally something totally different as we were growing up. Earth's atmosphere. It's bigger than we thought. It actually goes past the moon. Well, 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 what do you know? What does that mean? Is there Earth's atmosphere around the moon? We humans like to put labels and boundaries on things. For example, it says the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space is the Kármán line, K-A-R-M-A-N, the Kármán line. The point at 100 kilometers, 62 miles altitude, where aeronautics end and astronautics take over. But Earth's atmosphere is way more complicated than that. There's even some debate about where the Kármán line should be. Now a team of astronomers has discovered that it's bigger than we thought, extending all the way out to the moon and as far again. The region is called the Geocorona, part of an atmospheric layer called the exosphere. It's a tenuous cloud of neutral hydrogen that glows in far ultraviolet light. Because it's so thin, it's been hard to measure. Previously, its upper limit was thought to be around 200,000 kilometers, that's 124,000 miles from Earth, because that's the point at which the solar radiation pressure would override Earth's gravity. But according to data from the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, that is SOHO, co-owned by the European Space Agency and NASA, that limit does not even come close the 124,000 mile limit. The geocorona scientists have found extends out as much as 391,000 miles. That's almost another 200% more. So instead of 124,000 miles, they found it extends at least 391,000 miles, which means it engulfs our beloved satellite, our moon, in the atmospheric hug, Quote, the moon flies through the Earth's atmosphere, and quote, said physicist Igor Baliukin of Russia Space Research Institute. Let's look at this. That's what it looks like. So, that's our moon, and that's the Earth, and that is the geocorona. And that's the Soho satellite. The direction of the sun goes this way. The direction of the sun goes this way. The swan instrument line of sight is this way. And the Earth's orbit around the sun goes this way. Okay. No, that, sorry, that's the direction to the sun. What am I saying? Okay, this, that's the direction to the sun, and that's why the Earth goes this way. So, there, that's the geocorona, and as you can see, it's way past the moon. It's almost as far uh, past the moon as it is the moon is from the Earth. Amazing. Okay, let's keep our eyes on this for a minute. Okay, so that goes uh, 391,000 miles, which means it engulfs our beloved satellite, the moon, in an atmospheric hug. The moon flies through Earth's atmosphere, said physicist Igor Balyukin of Russia Space Research Institute. In fact, at an average distance of 238, here we are, 238,855 miles, it's almost smack bang in the middle. Right. Wonderful. Amazing. Smack dab in the middle. Now, what makes it even more amazing is that Soho made these observations, let's go right here, over two decades ago, between 1996 and 1998, and the data, better for you, the data has been sitting in an archive. 
<laughs> the data has been sitting in archive waiting for someone to get around to analyzing it. The readings had been taken specifically to map the geocorona using the observations, the observatory SWAN instrument, a sensitive piece of equipment designed to measure far ultraviolet emissions from hydrogen atoms called Lyman alpha photons. The Lyman alpha photons. Okay. We can't see these from Earth. They're absorbed by the inner layers of the atmosphere. So we need instruments out there in space to look for them. Apollo 16 astronauts, for instance, were able to take photographs of the Geo Corona in 1972, not even knowing they were still inside it. Now, the SWAN instrument can selectively measure light from the Geo Corona, filter out Lyman Alpha emissions from farther out in space, and this is what allowed for the more accurate map. As well as surprising size of the thing, it revealed a strange effect of the sun. On Earth's day side, the hydrogen atoms are compressed by sunlight, resulting in a density of 70 atoms per cubic centimeter, thinning out at 0.2 atoms at lunar orbit. That's not very dense at all. It's still effectively a vacuum. On the night side of the moon, the hydrogen uh, density is higher due to solar radiation pressure. It kind of ends up looking like a comet tail. While the hydrogen atoms do scatter ultraviolet radiation, the quantity is negligible, especially compared to the vast amounts being blasted by, out by the sun, making space a hazardous radiation environment for astronauts. So knowing the full extent of the geocorona is not going to make much difference for space exploration. What the discovery does mean is that any space telescopes within the geocorona will likely need to adjust their Lyman Alpha baselines for deep space observations. Quote, space telescopes observing the sky in ultraviolet wavelengths to study the chemical composition of stars and galaxies would need to take this into account. Let me read that again. Space telescopes observing the sky in ultraviolet wavelengths to study the, com the chemical composition of stars and galaxies would need to take this into account, said astronomer Jean-Luc Berthaud of the French National Center for Scientific Research, CNRS for short, and a former principal investigator of SWAN. You know what's even more interesting? That means no human being has ever actually been outside of Earth's atmosphere. Guess we've got some work to do, meaning that it's because it's also around the moon. How fascinating. The team's research has been published in the Journal of Geophysical Research under space physics. That's amazing. I'll leave a link below for you. This is on Science Alert, dated February 21st. Amazing. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.